as we talked about this. And it was just plain as day, right in front of us. And it was what Joe Sagami had said all the time. The orders were lost the first time. They were lost the second time. They never got to headquarters. So how could we expect headquarters to have a copy of the recommendation if everybody's frustrated because they got lost? By the very nature of them being lost, they're not going to be in a file. They're not going to be under file K for Keeble. The new strategy was not to try and find paperwork that had been missing for a half a century. Rather, the strategy was to go off the strength of the affidavit First Sergeant Sagami wrote. And that was the backbone. That was our document. That was our source. It was his signature with an eyewitness, and he identified himself. He, he identified his rank and where he was, and he was right square in the middle of the battle. And he said, if any man ever in the armed service deserved the Medal of Honor, it was Master Sergeant Woodrow Keeble. People started to latch on to the cause. The submission package grew. Nearly a dozen other affidavits written back in the 50s by other members of George Company were included. Resolutions stating that Woody should get the Medal of Honor were passed by the tribe's government, the North and South Dakota state delegations, and various veteran groups, including the American Legion. Those were added to the package. Federal representatives, including all four North and South Dakota senators, also got involved, lending their support. The package, now quite heavy with support, was forwarded to and approved by then Secretary of the Army Francis Harvey. The next step was the Secretary of Defense, but Defense Department lawyers found a problem. They said, we're back to the statute of limitations. There's a three-year time period from when the uh, action takes place to when the medal has to be awarded. A three-year time, a three-year window, and that three-year three window is over by over 50 years. So we have to get a law passed to waive that because he said, I can't proceed with this right in the face of a statute of limitations. But as Russ says, there were a lot of people involved who swing heavy hammers. In May of 2007, there's a defense appropriations bill that's approved by Congress and signed by the President of the United States that has a line in it for Woody. What I think is so amazing about the whole scenario, it'd be so easy to say, that was a long time ago. That's all in the past. We've just got to move on. But they didn't say that. Instead they said, we have to correct this wrong and we have to make it right. And person by person by person took that opinion. And on March 3rd, 2008, the President of the United States posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor to Master Sergeant Woodrow Wilson Keeble. Russ accepted it on his father's behalf. I'll die a happy man knowing that Woody got the Medal of Honor. I, I almost don't believe it yet. You know, it's just been there forever. The issue of moving this thing, moving it forward, attracting uh, attention to it. And, and, it, and it's happened, uh, and it's, I, I don't think it's really sunk in yet. Everything's just still kind of surreal. This probably won't sink in until maybe a week from now I'm back home in South Dakota, the freezing winds blowing, and all this will kind of sink in. Your word that there's no greater love than this. Oh, I, I think the world of President Bush for doing that. Uh, that's how I'll always remember him, and, and that's how he'll go down in, in my history books. He's a president who, who righted a wrong with Master Sergeant Woody Keeble. Protecting and defending. I was so excited because, you know, we'd worked on this for a number of years, and uh, Sometimes these things never quite happen just because there's too much bureaucracy. In this case, uh, the story was just unbelievably compelling. I think he would have said to everybody, you're, you're making uh, way too much fuss over me and what I did. And uh, I think he would be very humbled and very moved and honored, but I think he would think everyone's just going through too much uh, over what he did. There's no one more deserving than Woodrow of the Medal of Honor, in my opinion. And it's a great recognition by the United States to give this to him posthumously. But in extension, I think it honors all our Dakota veterans that have fought gallantly and, and uh, maybe have made the ultimate 
sacrifice. The Medal of Honor years ago was your eagle feathers. And you would see in a lot of motion pictures and movies, the, uh, the headdresses that as an individual was on horseback would touch the ground. Woody would also have a trail that extended on both sides of the horse all the way to the ground. 